Once upon a time, in the world of Greek mythology, Lethe was known for its infamous river of forgetfulness that flowed through the underworld. Its waters were said to cause anyone who drank from it to forget their past life completely. The river was one of the five underworld rivers and was known as the Amel's Potamus. It wound around the cave of Hypnos and was closely associated with the Lethean spirit of forgetfulness and oblivion. Interestingly, the name, Lethe, comes from the Greek word for, oblivion, or, forgetfulness. This ancient concept has inspired numerous literary and artistic works across generations. The classical Greek meaning of, Lethe, was, unforgetfulness, or, unconcealment, a word that shares similarities with aletheia, the Greek word for, truth. The myth of Lethe has influenced countless literary works of art and history. For instance, Dante's Inferno discusses Lethe as a place of spiritual forgetfulness, where souls drink from the river and forget their past lives. In art, the river of Lethe is often depicted as a calm river with little or no movement, symbolizing the stillness of memories erased by the waters of forgetfulness. In conclusion, Lethe was an intriguing and captivating topic in ancient Greek mythology. This iconic river represented human beings' timeless fascination with the complex interplay between memory and identity. One day, a shade named Orpheus found himself wandering around the Greek underworld. He had been a great musician in life and had hoped to find his beloved wife Eurydice in this realm of the dead. But when he arrived, he found that Eurydice had already been reborn and was living a new life. Feeling lost and alone, Orpheus stumbled upon the banks of Lethe. He watched as other shades approached the river, drank from it, and forgot their past lives. Orpheus was intrigued by the power of Lethe and decided to take a sip himself. As soon as he took a drink, Orpheus felt a sense of relief wash over him. The memories of his past life began to fade away, leaving him feeling lighter and more carefree than he had in ages. He drank more and more, the water tasting sweeter with each sip. Before he knew it, Orpheus had lost track of time and had been drinking from Lethe for what felt like hours. He was no longer sure who he was or why he had come to the underworld in the first place. Suddenly, he heard a voice calling out to him from the distance. It was Eurydice, who had somehow found him amidst the winding paths of the underworld. But when she saw Orpheus, she barely recognized him. His eyes were glazed over, and he seemed lost and confused. Eurydice quickly realized what had happened and urgently led Orpheus away from the river. She guided him to the nearby poplar tree, where she whispered the password to Mnemosyne. Instantly, Orpheus felt a surge of memories flooding back into his mind. He remembered who he was, why he had come to the underworld, and most importantly, he remembered his love for Eurydice. Grateful and relieved, Orpheus embraced Eurydice tightly. From that day onward, he knew that he would never forget the lessons of his past life, but would also never forget the love that had brought him to the underworld in the first place. Once upon a time, in ancient Greece, there was a river that flowed through the underworld called Lethe. This river was known as the River of Forgetfulness, and it was often associated with the personification of the same name. According to some accounts, Lethe was believed to be the daughter of Oceanus, while others identified her as the daughter of Eris, the goddess of chaos. In Greek mythology, Lethe was often compared to Mnemosyne, the goddess of memory. Lethe possessed the power to obliterate memories, enabling forgetting which had its benefits. On the other hand, Mnemosyne was opposite in nature, she was the goddess of memory, and her power allowed her to preserve memories. Despite these opposing powers, Lethe and Mnemosyne had a dynamic that was better viewed as the withdrawal of life rather than disaster and darkness, according to Roger Brooks' book Pathways into the Jungian World. The legend of Lethe holds that if one were to drink from the river, they would experience complete forgetfulness, forgetting all their past memories and experiences. The belief was that this would allow them to forget the sadness and pain of their past lives, and they could move on to a new beginning. However, despite the benefits of forgetting, the Greeks knew that forgetting was not always the best solution. Memory was essential in preserving history and identity. 
Therefore, Lethe and Mnemosyne's powers still existed, but it was up to every individual to decide which power to utilize when necessary. In conclusion, the story of Lethe and Mnemosyne has a significant meaning. It illustrates the importance of remembering one's past while also recognizing the value of forgetting. The two powers coexist and depend on each other to create a balance in one's life. Long ago, according to ancient Greeks, drinking from the river Lethe would make the souls forget their past lives and prepare them for their next reincarnation. The story of Myth of Air, described in Book X of Plato's Republic, narrates how the dead arrived at a barren land of Lethe and had to drink from it. But some mystery religions taught the existence of another river, Mnemosyne, from where you could get on missions and remember everything, just like Goddess Mengput served soup on the Bridge of Forgetfulness in Chinese mythology. Gold plates dated back to the 4th century BC found in Thuriae of southern Italy and elsewhere throughout the Greek world confirmed the existence of the two rivers. Worshippers would drink from them before making oracular consultations with the god. By the 20th century, Martin Heidegger used Lethe to indicate the concealment of being and the concealment of concealment, remarkable issues in modern philosophy. This thinking has been expanded upon by future philosophers. Thus, Lethe, as depicted in Greek mythology, is still a matter of study and interest that intrigues even modern philosophers with its mysterious yet significant concepts. Do you want to explore more Greek mythology stories? Who do you want to see featured next? Subscribe and leave a comment below to let me know. I'll see you in the next video.